All right, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Aaron Chapman, and my topic today is uh, no huddle communication. So a little bit about me. Um, currently, I am the director of football operations and the offensive coordinator for Still City Prep. Uh, Still City Prep is in Pittsburgh, PA. We are a new prep school that has come about that we are uh, working on trying to help kids get to the next level of college to help them further their career and earn their degree. Um, my, my coaching career goes back about, uh, this will be my 13th season, so 12 years. I've coached on many levels. I've coached on the youth, high school, college, and semi-professional level in my career. Um, each one of the levels had something different to learn, uh, something different that that uh, that really hit me. Uh, so I learned a lot. Um, I've held the titles of head coach, offensive coordinator, offensive and defensive assistant coach. And um, I've also created my own system, which is called the fast break offense. Um, if you want to know more about the fast break offense, I will have my contact information up there. You can drop an email. You can visit my Twitter. I have highlights actually on my Twitter. You can send me a message if you want to know more. So um, talk to me about it. it, it I, I love talking about my own offense. Trust me. Um, but let's get into it. So no huddle communication. This is basically when you have the communication coming from the sidelines into the players for them to run the play. Now for no huddle communication, this is the communication basically when you're not having a quarterback come to the sideline or a receiver coming to the sideline, basically what you're doing is relaying the play in so the players can do things more efficiently without having to run back and forth to the sideline. Um, it's more effective. I've seen if, um, if you have a real signaler and a dummy signaler, we can talk more about that later, you know, but, um, this communication can be done in a few ways. I've seen it done with boards, um, with hand signals and wristbands, and I've actually used all three. So I'm going to talk about all three today. So I started no huddle communication about seven years ago. Um, I was working at Geneva College as the JV offensive coordinator, and our primary offense was no huddle. Um, honestly, I thought it was just something cool. You know, I didn't realize the benefits of it uh, when I was coming. I was really young in my career. So, you know, but as I learned more and study more, I seen the, really the benefits of how you can run the no huddle system against the defense. Um, in my first two years of using it, uh, I've, I've, I had maybe a few uh, no huddle or a few delay game penalties. Um, I've had four of my first uh, four years. In the last two years, I've kind of perfected my system. I've had no delay game penalties. So, you know, knock on wood if I could find it, you know, but um, it's something I've been able to really do and really do well with my offense. Um, I first started with whiteboards or I should say with boards. And it's 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 interesting how to do it. And I'm going to break it down a little later. But, you know, that's where I started. Currently, I use a, a mixture of signals and wristband, which really works well with the, uh, with the players. So that's my formula currently. And I'll explain more. So with boards, this could have came about uh, before um, the early 2000s, but it really it really was big uh, with Chip Kelly and the Oregon Ducks in the early 2000s. That's where I first learned about the boards. And this is a way that um, uh, a team could put pictures on a board and each pitcher can have a meaning for a play or even just one box can have the whole play. So you can be as detailed and as thorough as you want, or you can be general as you want as far as, you know, using one box or using all four. Yeah, you can customize a, you can customize your boards any way you like. So, um, you know, putting pictures up, you know, you want to make sure to put pictures up. That makes sense. And I'll explain that a little more in the future. So I put up as an example of what a board of mine would look like. And it, let me explain about it because it may look like hieroglyphics right now. So we have uh, these three guys in the corner which are also known as the Migos, which are a, a music band. Um, the guy on the left is wearing an orange coat. He's our guy that's going to tell us what formation and what side the formation is going to. So 
since there's three guys that's going to tell us it's trips and it's going to tell us that that guy that's in the orange coast on the left so it's going to be trips left and the yo-yo here is going to tell us about the motion so it's going to be trips left yo that's going to tell our y guy he's going to motion across and that's the the first box here the second box is chevy impala now impala was uh one of our um, concepts for run so that gives us the run play right there um so chevy impala um spot tells us what we're going to do on the rpo so if, uh, what we did with spot was it was um uh an in-breaking hitch an in-breaking hitch and number three had a flat that was our spot um rpo concept so we will run spot while we ran inside zone and zorro tells us which way we're blocking so zorro means that the whole play is going to the right so if i'm a lineman i'm looking at this last box on the right here that's telling me where i'm going if i'm a receiver i'm kind of looking at the top three boxes that tells me well uh, you know the um, the formation play direction motion concept and pass concept if i'm a running back i'm going to look at all of them or uh, all three of them just like the receivers and if I'm a quarterback, I'm gonna have to look at all of it just because, you know, you have to know the whole play. So this is kind of, you know, what we used during my time when I was using boards. And if I wanted to flip it and run it the other way, you see how I flipped the um, the guys up top. So now it's uh, trips right, yo, um, Chevy Impala, spot zeal. And zeal is our blocking scheme. That just tells us that we're going to do zone to the left. So this is how we would do boards for that play. So if here's another uh, example um, of the boards that we use. So um, we have Rick and Morty up there. We have Hop, Wisconsin, 89, and Molly. So the, the formation is going to be dictated by our friend uh, Rick up there. So Rick is on the left side. So this will be doubles left. So it will put our running back on the left side, hop, which would mean that we're having hop motion from our H. Though, so he's moving from doubles into trips. And then we're going to run the concept Wisconsin, which is a three-step pass play. No, it's a five-step pass play, my, my mistake. Five-step pass play. 89 is going to be our backside tag. So um, the two, the two um two receivers on the backside, which will be the X receiver and a running back are going to run 89. So, and, and that was a post and it was a wheel from the backside, the, the backfield. Uh, Molly tells us that we are going to block man protection to the left. So we are going to send our man side to the left and our zone side to the right. So we run a combination blocking. So this is kind of what the car would look like if we were running this play. Now get into hand signals. Now, these are specific signals that you set into the team from the sideline. Um, you can have one signal for an entire play. You can have uh, many, many signals. You know, as you see the guy in the picture, you have two guys signaling. Uh, one can be the real signaler. One can be a dummy signaler. Also, these both can be signalers signaling different things. So when I use signals, um, I had two, I had three people, one giving the formation, one giving the play, and one was a dummy. So basically the dummy guys is giving, you know, anything to throw off the defense to what we're doing. Um, the, the, uh, the formation guy is basically doing the formation and the direction of the formation and the play, the play singler is uh, singling the play and the direction of the play as well. So we're able to get all that information in without missing a beat or without having anyone come to the sideline, which gives us the advantage as far as running plays. Now, these are just some of the um, some of the uh, formation signals that we use. For doubles, we had a uh, double fist overhead. Uh, for trips, we could do traveling. So you can do, uh, you know, traveling and then basketball. Um, Panther, we do claw, uh, wide arms for wide, so we spread them wide. 
uh, wings, you got Dumbo ears, which is all fun. The, the kids love that one. Uh, goes fingers under chin and spread. So we do praying hands and then we come across. So these are all formations that we were able to use to get into our um, our receivers and our line and uh, our offense to uh, run the play. So the way we did our play direction and the way we did a formation direction is by a strong or weak call. So the strong call was, you know, a uh, muscle up and the weak call was the muscle down. So uh, weak was left, uh, strong is uh, right. Uh, that's just because, you know, most people are right, right hand dominant. Um, not to say anything about anybody left handed, just, you know, it's not too typical. So, you know, that's why we had it down for the week as far as the left. So we use these to, to show uh, what the formation side will go to and also which uh, the play direction will go to. And these are just some run concepts we used, uh, sneak. So we did uh, the, the smash on the fist, almost almost like a, like a smash on the play. Uh, trap, we would slice the neck. Uh, zone, we would draw a square with our index finger. Um, lead draws, two six shooters. Uh, stretch, throw in the dart. So these are just some of the um, the concepts we were the signals we were able to use for the concepts that we were running um, for our run for our run plays. I'm gonna show you next what our past concepts were. So we had gators. So Florida, it would be the gator arms. Um, follow would be the fingers walking. So these are just some ones we were able to use to um, to get plays into our um, to our offense. And what the way we did this is when we use primary signals, we don't use backside tag routes. We kind of uh, have the tag inside of the signal. So Gator had his own play. So Gator was um, was a five-step play for us. Um, the inside guy on the right, on the concept side, would run a post corner on the uh, line. Uh, the outside guy would run um, a dig behind it. Um, and then we would have um, a go from the inside guy on the left side and a hitch on the back side. So that was kind of how we put everything together we put it just all inside one one signal which kind of made it really easy whenever we were going fast now you can always go as fast as you want with with this hand signals you can always slow it down and go as slow as you want you can tempo it any way you like the whole idea of it is you're not giving the defense enough time to recover this is why it's so dangerous if you're able to incorporate using no huddle and signals or boards or those things, any type of no huddle communication to really um, signal into place to your um, offense. Now, wristbands. Wristbands, very effective. Now, one thing about wristbands is um, you could be using a wristband and, you know, the defense also could be using a wristband. So you may have a situation where you have two guys actually or two sides of the ball using a wristband which could be very confusing so if your defense is using one um you, you might want to work it out and, and use something else or maybe you can come to some type of uh, uh understanding and you can use it and maybe they can switch so you never want to use wristbands while on the other side is using them because you never want to confuse kids especially if you have them going both ways you know, the whole idea is to keep it simple so you're able to go faster and able to be more efficient. So with the wristbands, you can be as general or as detailed as you want. Uh, the more detail I've, the more detail you put on the card, the less plays you're able to run, though. So you want to keep that in mind because if, if you have the whole play on um, the inside of one of the wristbands, you know, you can't put you can't split it and uh, put another play there. So you're really just limited in the amount of plays that you can bring in. Uh, but it's still very, very useful, even if you only use a segmented amount of plays. Um, for the numbers for the wrist that coincide with the wristband, you could do it either one of two ways. You can either shout them out from the sidelines. Uh, we, I've done one. I've done actually both ways. Uh, we would shout it out and we would use uh, four digits. 
So the first two digits would go to the play and the second two digits were dummy calls. So um, if we wanted to run play 28 and we were running on the first set of uh, digits, we would call 2811. So we would be running play 28, 11 is a dummy call. So we would go, they would look at the wristband, quarterback would give um, the line, the uh, blocking scheme, and then we would go. So, um, you know, that's how we've done it. Uh, now I signal in the numbers. Uh, we do just a, a, a series of signals just so, you know, the only one talking is the quarterback uh, whenever he gives the blocking scheme to the line. So, you know, we're able to go fast and efficient uh, on that. We're in because we use a check with me system. So either we're going quick or either we slow it down, go to the wristband and then go. But either way, I've done it. Um, like I said, I've had no delay game penalties and it's worked very, very well for me. So this is kind of what a general wristband will look like. So you have the numbers all the way on the left side. Uh, you can put the formation on there. You can put the play direction, motion, and also the play and the blocking scheme. So this is what a, a, a general wristband will look like. So if I'm calling in plays and I'm just saying, okay, we want to run um, play three. So we would go, you know, 0344. So 03 would be empty jet sweep. So we'd be, that's what we would run. We would run empty jet sweep. I actually got this wrong here. This would be Zulu instead of Shelly. So um, our line would be blocking, or quarterback would go up to the line, say Zulu, 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 uh, come back, and then our line would know that we are running zone left, and everybody should know that we're running jet sweep uh, as far as the skill guys. So this is the general wristband. Now, when you want to get more detailed, this is kind of how it will look. So with, with this right here, I have the formation, the play direction, the motion, and I also put the name of the play along with what everyone's doing. Now, the way I label this is I put the routes right next to the queue. So the queue breaks it up to know where the quarterback is. So now the player should know that we're in doubles by two routes being on each side. So that's kind of, this way is kind of uh, you know, more detailed, more, uh, I would like to say idiot proof, you know, but you know, some people still get it wrong, but this right here, um, was really beneficial for me when I was doing semi pro and we only had one day of practice, um, a week. So I was able to really, you know, use this right here to be as detailed as possible to, uh, so we could run the plays that we were able to use. However, at any given time, I was only able to run, 20, 22 plays, I was only able to bring 22 plays into a game. So while I don't like being limited, you know, cause you never know what you need. Um, it, it really was effective for us because we were able to get things done and get things done fast. So uh, half the time when we were running plays, we were running past the defense who weren't even set. So it was really beneficial for us. Well, I, I know I kind of, you know, talked over, you know, the three things very briefly. Um, but if, you know, if there's anything you would like to talk about more, um, I have my contact information right here. Um, here's my email, a Chapman at Steel City Prep. And uh, that's dot org. I apologize for not putting that on there. Um, so steelcityprep.org. And um, for all those who use Twitter, if you want to get in touch with me, here's my Twitter handle. Uh, like I said, I have my uh, highlight films from uh, last season on there. So if you want to check out my offense, you know, you can do so there. Or you can message me and we can just talk football. But I'm always willing to talk with anyone who wants to learn or wants to share information. So 